In this video, we're going to work on some complicated tension problems. Uh, let's start th with this one. A sign of mass m equals 10 kilograms is hanging as shown below. The slanty wire makes an angle theta with the ceiling. What is the magnitude of the tension in each wire? Okay, so to start, let's talk about the different wires in this problem. Um, there are three. And if I draw a little dot right here to sort of represent like maybe like a knot, there's going to be some kind of knot where these three wires are attached or you know, connected. Um, so if I think about that, then I can see three separate tensions. One tension to the left, one tension up at a slanty angle, and one tension down. So I would label these maybe T1, T2, and T3. So what is each tension equal to? Well, let's start with the easiest of, of these, um, and that is this T3. So if there's a tension pulling down on that little knot, then there is a tension also pulling up. And those tensions are equal to each other because this thing is balanced. Um, so the downward tension on the knot is equal to the upward tension that's holding the mass up. Well, what would that be equal to? Well there's going to be a weight force acting down. And so T3, that downward tension, is just equal to mg. So there's the first thing, right? I know that T3, the tension down, is equal to mg, which, you know, using uh, m is 10 kilograms and g is 10 meters per second squared gives me 100 newtons. Okay, well now let's move on to T1 and T2. And also, let's talk about the fact that sometimes this problem will pre be presented without that third wire hanging down. Sometimes it'll just look like this, where you have the wire on either side of the object. Now, in this case, the problem looks the exact same. You got T, it would be like T1, T2. Um, but instead of a T3, you just skip right to the fact that it's MG. In effect, it, it sort of simplifies the problem if we approach it this way uh, when we're looking at T1 and T2. So let's draw a dot representing um, the knot uh, where all of those wires connect. And let's draw sort of an enlarged free body diagram on that dot so that we can uh, better represent what's going on. So the first thing I have is that tension T1 that's horizontal and to the left slanty tension T2 and then instead of saying T3 down I'm just gonna go ahead and say MG okay cool so where do I go from here well I know that I have to do something with this tension at an angle um, and converting the tension into an X and a Y component is probably a good start Doing that is a little complicated because my angle is up with the ceiling and whenever we do components of vectors we want the angle to be down by the dot, somewhere down by that actual dot. So here's, here's what I do, I draw my little Zorro thing. And I think if this is theta, then so is this. I forget what that is called in uh, geometry, but it's something and it's true. So I know that my angle theta can go there. And I'm going to use that angle to make an x and a y component. Now, of course, uh, as long as this angle is adjacent, I'll use cosine, so t2 cosine theta, for my x component. And then opposite for the y, so I would do t2 sine theta. OK, classic x and y components. Where do we go from here? Well, this problem is is balanced, right? We're in equilibrium. So all the net forces on, on everything, right? Sigma Fx and Sigma Fy, they're zero. Everything is balanced. So that tells me that any forces the point left are equal to the forces the point right. T1 is equal to T2 cosine theta. And T2 2 sine theta is equal to mg. So let's let's do the x versus. I don't, don't want to confuse you. T1 equals T2 cosine theta. Okay, so the left force equals the right force. Then we look at the y. mg and T2 sine theta. mg equals 
t2 sine theta. Okay, so now we have a system of equations, and we want to find both t1 and t2, right? That's our goal. We want to find the tension in all the wires. So how do we how do we do that? Well, right away you probably would want to try and solve this system with substitution, right? Just solve maybe this equation for t2, um, and then plug it in, and thereby eliminate it, getting an equation for t1. Uh, and that's great, that would work well. But here's a new systems of equation trick um, that maybe you've learned before, maybe you haven't learned before. So with Atwood's machines and you know two box problems, that sort of thing, normally we make uh, two equations or three equations and then we add the left and the right sides because we're gonna cancel something out. Well, you can add, subtract, multiply, or divide both sides. And, and still be able to eliminate things. So in this problem, instead of adding the left sides together and the right sides together, I'm gonna divide the left side by the left side and divide the right side by the right side. So doing this gives me T1 over mg equals T2 cosine theta over T2 sine theta. Why would I do that? Because T2 cancels out. And now I get T1 over mg equals cosine theta over sine theta, which is cotangent theta, in case you don't remember. You could leave it as cosine over sine, it's fine if you don't remember that cosine over sine is tangent, uh, cotangent, sorry. Um, and then to solve for T1, it's really easy, right? T1 is just mg times cotangent of theta, because you multiply mg by uh, to both sides. Okay, so let's get a number. Um, the mass is 10 kilograms, g is 10 meters per second squared, so 100 newtons times cotangent of, oh, you know what, they didn't give us an angle. Let's make up an angle right now, because this problem was supposed to have an angle. Theta equals 30 degrees, there it is, cool. Okay, so let's use 30 degrees. Cotangent of 30 degrees. Uh, so 100, and make sure your calculator is in degree mode, 100. Uh, cotangent, which uh, is 1.7, so 100 times 1.73 is going to give us 173 newtons. It's like 173.2, but let's just go ahead and call that 173 newtons. Okay, so that's T1. 173 newtons. Now, how do I find T2? Well, I've got these two original equations. Let me get rid of this work right here. I've got the two original equations that I wrote. Um, and now I can either plug T1 back into um, my T1 equals T2 cosine theta equation. Or I can just use this equation right here to solve for T2. T2 is going to be equal to um, mg over sine theta. So this is gonna give you 100 newtons over sine of 30 degrees, which sine of 30 is 1 half. So 100 over 1 half is like 100 times 2, so 200 newtons. Boom, we found the tension in the slanty wire. Okay, great. And you know, our general process is we draw a free body diagram, convert um, angled forces into components, then we write equations if they're not accelerating. We don't set them equal to MA, we set them equal to each other. Um, and then solve using some sort of clever trick. Substitution always works if substitution is the thing that you see as the quick and immediate solution. So now let's deal with a problem where there is a complicated tension and the forces are not balanced. So there is an acceleration happening. This is a really fun problem. Uh, you are getting on the highway and notice that the air freshener hanging from your rear view mirror is angled back from its normal vertical position as shown below. You check your speedometer and notice you accelerate from 15 meters a second to 20 meters a second in two seconds. Then you think, because you're zoning out and you're really smart, what is the angle? So what is the angle? Well, let's let's stop and deal with this first. This is an obvious indication that there is an acceleration of the problem, right? Because it says you accelerate. Then it gives you information that you can use to find that acceleration. So let's find that acceleration. 
right? V naught is 15, V is 20, and they give you a time of two seconds. How do you find the acceleration from that? Well, you can take your motion equation that you're really comfortable using, um, or you can just use the fact that acceleration is change in velocity over a change in time. They're the same equation, just rewritten. So what's the change in velocity? You go from 15 to 20, so positive 5 in 2 seconds, so you divide that by 2, and we get that the acceleration is half of 5, or 2.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so, so let's, let's write that down um, up here, 2.5 meters per second squared, and then I'm going to get rid of this work just so that we have some space to, to work. Okay, so the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second. And it's important to note that the acceleration is, we're assuming, horizontal. Um, even though there might be like a slight inclination if you get on the highway, let's just make this problem easy and assume your car is driving on the road and it's going, you know, to the right. That is a terrible car. I don't even know what that is. Okay. So anyway, um, what do we do with this problem? Well, we're going to draw a free body diagram for the air freshener. And I'm going to draw this off to the right um, so that we have more room to work. So this dot represents the air freshener. Okay. And to figure out what that angle is, we're going to need to draw the force. There's a tension, right? Your, your little tree's air freshener is hanging on by a string. So there's tension in that string, T. Um, and then there's this angle here, theta. Okay, so this problem, first of all, we need to deal with the angle. Um, it's going to be a little bit different from the last problem because now, instead of having an angle um, with the ceiling, we have an angle with respect to the vertical. So when I do my little Zorro trick, like to make a Z, then my theta goes here by the base of the vector. Now, that can be a little annoying, um, but really all it does is it swaps sine and cosine for the tensions, right? So to get my y component, I have theta adjacent. So this would be t cosine theta. So t cosine theta is now up. And then my x component, which goes to the left, is opposite of theta. So this would be a t sine theta force. OK, so that's the first thing that's different. What else? Are there any other forces acting on this object? like? A force that's always acting on objects near the surface of the earth in a downward direction with a really interesting factor that stays the same yeah there's a weight force right this thing has some weight that's going to be equal to mg now notice we are not told what the mass of this um, air freshener is and that's not a mistake that i made like in the last problem when i forgot to give you an angle um, that's intentional somehow in this problem we are going to uh, get rid of that that mg and doing so is a little tricky so let's let's start by thinking about forces that are balanced this thing is accelerating to the right it's not accelerating up or down which means that my up and down forces are equal to each other or t cosine theta is equal to mg so t cosine theta equals mg Okay, well, so what about <laughs> t sine theta? It's acting to the right. There's no force acting to the left for it to be balanced by. How do I know what to set it equal to? Well, if there's no force acting against it, then that means that we have unbalanced force. So if t sine theta is unbalanced, that means it's the net force. And the net force is always equal to mass times acceleration. So t sine theta is equal to the mass of the little trees times acceleration. Why is important? Is there, sorry, <laughs> why is that important? Why did I do that? Well, now if we apply our little divide the left sides and divide the right sides trick, so pew, pew, then t cancel out and m cancels out. That's crazy. What I'm left with is sine theta over cosine theta equals the acceleration of the car over g, the acceleration due to gravity. And of course, sine over cosine theta um, is tangent. 
theta. This is like, this is wild. <laughs> so, so first of all, um, a couple of things. If I could rewrite this to say uh, acceleration equals g tangent theta. And what that would mean is that if, if I had some way of measuring theta um, in my car, like if you put like a, if you hung a protractor from the rear view mirror of your car, then based on what the angle that the string makes with that protractor, you could calculate your exact acceleration of, from your car without ever having to get a stopwatch or a meter stick or, or anything like that. So um, physicists use this. It's a very special apparatus. Uh, it's called an accelerometer. An accelerometer is a way of measuring acceleration without actually needing to take any any time values. You just have to look at what is it, um, what angle is made with a vertical line like that. Um, and then also, what planet are you on? <laughs> because if you're on the moon, uh, then your air freshener is going to have a, a very different angle than it would be on the Earth. Okay, but so that's besides the point. We're not looking for the acceleration here, although if we needed the acceleration, we would just do g tan theta, g tan theta. Um, but instead, we want to know what is theta. So to do that, we just do the tangent inverse of the acceleration over g which I know both of those things. The acceleration we found is 2.5, so 2.5 meters per second, and g is 10 meters per second. Oh, sorry, squared, they're both meters per second squared, which is good because the units have to cancel out if it's going inside of uh, tangent or inverse tangent. So inverse tangent of 2.5 over 10 is 14 degrees. Boom, 14 degrees with the vertical. Okay, so um, kind of complicated, a little bit new. Uh, this new trick of taking a system of equations and dividing the left and the right side, we're going to start to see that happening more and more often um, in, in some of the problems that we work, work, work with. Um, but for now, it's just kind of a new fun trick, and you now know how you could measure your acceleration if you are on, um, oh, I don't know, like a satellite or something like that. Okay, you did a great job, you're very smart, and this video is over.